How many of you have been caught up in the pH scam? That's eating foods that will help you change your pH. It's very, very popular. People believe it. And it's all a scam. Let me tell you how this thing works, the history of it. Way back in the early 1900s, they took different foods and they put them in something called a bomb calorimeter, which throws a very, very high temperature. And they ashed the foods. They ashed all the foods. And then they made a listing of the pH of that ash. And the notion was that if you ate a food with a known pH, that it would induce a change in your pH levels. That's your acid-base levels. And that became one of the very popular ways of, of dealing with cancer, actually, because the argument is that the body has a pH level of 7.4. Now, that's the level that's maintained in the blood. That's not the controlling site of pH. That's inside the, en inside the cells where your enzymes process things. Enzymes operate best at a pH of about 7.0. So that's what's actually defended, is the pH inside the cell. Now, what do I mean by defended? The blood has a buffering system. So if the cells are making acid and releasing it into the blood, the blood buffers that acid and eliminates it. And these mechanisms work for both the lungs and the kidneys. That's how that's controlled. So the argument goes that cancer will not grow in an alkaline medium, which is 7.4 is slightly alkaline. 7.0 is the point of equality between acid and alkaline. And then the argument is that meat has a lot of acid in it. And we've got we to stay away from meat because we don't want the acid. Now, if you ate nothing but meat, your kidneys have the capacity to eliminate all the acid that's produced by that meat. They only are working at maybe a 10% of their maximum on a daily basis. Now, the next important point is you cannot change your pH. It's a controlled life process, just like your temperature. You cannot change it. The body will not allow it to be changed. It does change, and it does vary, but it must be brought back to the level in the cell. That's called the aminostat theory. The pH level inside the cell must be maintained at around 7. So now if you go out and sprint and you form a lot of lactic acid, you've got to eliminate that acid. And we're all set up to eliminate acid. And that's how fruits and vegetables became glorious and dignified is because the argument was is that they would make us more alkaline. And becoming more alkaline was the way to go. Well, you can't become more alkaline. So the standard measures for this is not at the level of the cell. That would be what we would do in the lab. What people are doing, they're actually measuring the pH of their urine and the pH of their saliva. Now, that's not where things are controlled. And urine is just waste. So you're measuring the pH of your waste when you do that. And then people argue that Oh, look, I can put something in there and I can modify the pH of my urine. Sure you can. Because you've got to excrete either the excess alkaline or the excess acid. So don't be afraid of meat. The low-carb diet that's low in sugar and glucose is actually whipping up on cancer now. And uh, it's all part of the glycation process. So it's important to understand this and that you can't mediate this. So and you can go search the internet for acid alkaline, you'll just see a ton of stuff. The doctors are writing books on this and people argue aggressively about how this is so true. But this is just basic physiology. Basic human physiology and animal physiology as well. You can't change. You can't change some of these things. They're set in stone. They're not under your volitional control. So once you realize that there are things in your body that are not under your control, you make your life a heck of a lot easier because you won't try and control these things, such as cholesterol levels. So that's the story on the pH scam. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.